the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Today the church celebrates St. Catherine of Siena, one of the big important saints of the church because of her spirituality and her love for the Eucharist. And we also understand too that she taught a lot of spirituality to the people. She was famous for her holiness. And she lived, began she began her life um, in 1347. So it's a very long time again ago. And she joined the third order of Saint Dominic and was very faithful to that life. Also she had a Augustinian spiritual director, and she would travel quite a few miles through the woods in order to go see the, to go see he came to see her, but traveled through the woods a good distance to come to her place. Let us ask God to be with us and to forgive us for when we have failed. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion, and her service to your church. Grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There broke out a severe persecution of the Christian church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the Apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made a loud lament over him. Saul, meanwhile, was trying to destroy the church, entering house after house and dragging out men and women he handed them over for imprisonment. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when he, they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of the Lord, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Everyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. 
and shall raise him on the last day, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose, lose anything of what he gave me, but I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's the persecution that began of the Christians in Jerusalem spread the people out far and wide because they ran for their lives. But it also had another effect because among the apostles and the believers, there were some disciples of Jesus. The deacon Philip is the one who goes out to preach the word in Samaria. Remember, the Samaritans never spoke to the Jews. The Jews never spoke to the Samaritans because there was great animosity between them. But it is the deacon Philip who was able to convert them because they saw the signs. Now, maybe some of the Samaritans were already converted because of the woman at the well and what happened with Jesus. But the faith grew there, and the faith grew in lots of other places quickly, like in the way that a wild fire sprung up in the forest spreads. And there was nothing to hold it back. But the works of the apostles and their preaching is the backbone of what called people to conversion. And there's a whole section of the Acts of the Apostles where the, because they're scattered, all sorts of conversions are described. Among them, Philip converted the Ethiopian eunuch, which we haven't come to in the stories yet of the early church, but we will. And and Paul, who was Saul at the time and a persecutor of the Christians, gets knocked from his horse and he will convert. We will see that in other days to come. So that call to conversion is one to take the Lord into our hearts and our minds and to convert our way of living. Jesus begins this discourse on the Eucharist in the reading that we have from the gospel today. And because his faith and his life comes to us in the faith and in the Eucharist, we have life because of him. But because we have that life, and this is something I talked about a little yesterday, because we have the presence of the Lord within us, whether in spirit or in the Eucharist, depends on where we are in the faith. Because we have that presence of God, the presence of Christ in us, we are able to be, by our manner of living, preachers of the gospel. Not everyone is called to, to preach, but some are. But more importantly, we're, we are blessed and able to preach the faith by the way we live, by our manner of treating one another with care and concern, by our reaching out to the less fortunate to be able to offer what we've got. 
So it's in that sense we celebrate this Eucharist and ask the Lord to draw closer to us so we can be closer to him, but also so that our faith will grow within us and spread to other people. Let us pray that God will watch over and bless us and keep the Lord ever in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. And that by the grace of the Holy Spirit and the Eucharist, we too may be able to be preachers of the faith in our own way. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those suffering with the coronavirus all those who have passed away for their families let us pray too for all those who serve and care for the sick we pray to the lord let us pray too for the essential workers who are on the job to help and protect and save us serve us let us pray to the lord let us remember in our prayers today jose flores in this mass let us pray for all of our sick and loved ones who have passed from us. I especially would like to remember Ramona Lugo, who is the mother-in-law of a very close friend of mine. For her, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear these our prayers. Help us to draw close to you so we will be blessed in the way you draw us close to yourself, through Christ our Lord. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Prove the vine and the work of human hands. Let it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, your sacrifice and mine, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give ever fervent thanks to you, one true God, through Christ our Lord. The Lord 
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. We pray and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.